Always an exciting time when you can land your quarterback for your signing class. And here to break it all down for us is War Chance lead football analyst Dominic Robinson as we're talking about Luke Cromanhawk's signature on the paper to come to Florida State University. And we're talking about what Luke brings to the table for Florida State in the years to come. Dominic, excited to do these features with you. And uh, let's talk quarterbacks now. Yes, sir, man. Got to get your quarterback, uh, especially in today's day and age. Um, you know, you pretty much got to sign one every year now because the, whoever the backup is is probably leaving. So um, it's, uh, you know, it's important that you get one and you you establish that, you know, that you'll have some stability going forward if if your starter, whoever your starter is, is uh, goes out, which um, is, is pretty common in, in today's game. It's such a physical game. It's one of these things where, you know, signing day, if you're a made man and Luke has been committed to Florida State for a long time, in fact, D-Rob, they, they landed the commitment from Luke before most other big universities had seen what this quarterback was all about. But sometimes we'll be looking at the junior film of these kids because if they know where they're going, uh, the huddle process isn't as important. So uh, in some cases we'll be looking at junior film, but there's plenty of things here that translate to the next level. So, Dominic, what are some strengths that you see uh, from this young quarterback, and do you think he's a good fit for what Mike Norvell wants to do in Tallahassee? Yeah, absolutely. Right away, I'll tell you, the first thing that like really jumped out at me was I saw Tate Rodemaker. Um, you know, I, I saw a long, athletic, confident um, quarterback. And uh, and then the th another thing that jumped out at me, which has jumped out at me with all the, the Florida State signees, is this is an athlete. Um, he's not a Jordan Travis, you know, twitchy, explosive guy. Um, but this is a guy who likes to make plays off schedule. He's very confident in the way that he delivers the football. And, um, you know, this is a guy who wants to, to, uh, you know, use his legs to, to escape in the pocket and, and find open guys. And, um, so, you know, you, you'll see a lot of that, uh, on, on the film. So if you're breaking down a player like this, Dominic, let's say you're in a meeting and uh, you got some experience on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays and, and all of, of all football, but if this is your next opponent and you're looking at this guy and here's one of those examples, him breaking the pocket, making a play, how do you prepare for a player like this? You know, with him, uh, you know, a guy like him, it's really tough because he wants, you can tell he wants to push the ball downfield. Um, you know, he really is he's going to hold on to the ball a long time. That's probably something that is his greatest strength and also his greatest weakness, as we saw with Tate, um, you know, this year and the breakdown that we did is, you know, a guy who who's wants to make plays and push the ball downfield. Sometimes they hold on to it a little bit too long. And so they're 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 tough to prepare for in the sense that if you do give them that time, they will absolutely shred you downfield. Um, with chunk plays and, and and pushing the ball to receivers, you know, past that 15 yard, you know, 20 yard mark, you know, explosive plays. Um, so, you know, that's the thing that that would really concern me is, you know, some of those plays you you with their off schedule, there's really nothing you can do. Um, you kind of just tip your cap and say, man, that that guy was just better than us on on a day like today. Some of the things I'm seeing here is a natural runner, as you're talking about a good athlete, but uh, arm strength wise. Think this is uh, adequate enough for the Power Five level, a place like Florida State. So it's really what's really interesting is, um, you know, people talk about like arm strength a lot in terms of you know a talent evaluation. There's a little bit difference between a guy who spins the ball really well and then a guy who has arm strength. Mm -hmm. And so the the best the best way that I can describe that is. A guy who can throw the ball far doesn't necessarily mean that he can throw it with great velocity in the 15 and under range, in the intermediate range. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of based on your spin rate. And um, so what I see with him is he definitely has the ability to throw the ball deep down the field. And he likes to do that. He wants to stand in there and and and, and do that. I do see in the intermediate range – um, you know, there aren't as many uh, uh, clips. And again, this is a highlight and this is a highlight from junior year. So you never know. A lot of times when you're looking at these highlight films, it's really difficult to assess a guy um, on the level of, 
uh, like we do for the breakdowns where I've got all 22s. Mm-hmm. Um, I've watched the team all year. I know what they are trying to do philosophically. When you're just watching a highlight, it's really hard to 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 t- to really you can't make an evaluation based on what a guy needs to work on. Right. For instance, um, what a guy needs to get better at, you know, because you don't know there's so much there's a lot of lost in context. So with him, I don't see a lot in the intermediate range um, in terms of, you know, throws, the, the deep comebacks, the the digs, things like that. But when you're talking post go, you know, here's a go ball right here. Oh, no, here's a post ball that he's throwing 55 yards. Um, mm. You know, he's got plenty of arm strength in terms of pushing the ball, the deep balls down the field. So in general, this seems like it's a decent fit for Florida State and its offense. If you're saying that uh, you already see Tate and what he brings to the table. Uh, he's also somebody who played in the Elite 11, and I know, Dominic, you've got a long history with the Elite 11, and uh, mm-hmm. he was one of the guys who turned most heads. In fact, uh, after Georgia's high-profile flip uh, from Georgia to Nebraska, as Rayola, Dylan Rayola went that way, uh, Georgia made a late phone call to Luke Cromanhawk. Also a good sign when the Bulldogs are uh, – when they're when they're trying to scramble and make something work that they call on the guy that Florida State – is looking at Florida State has had committed for some time. So let's bring up uh, a, a little scale that uh, the evaluator, Dominic Robinson, he wears many hats, he has many skills. But let's take a look at a scale of some of the evaluations here and some of the levels in terms of high school prospect rating scale. We've done this before in years past, but if you're brand new to the channel, this is how D-Rob breaks it down as to instant impact versus project and everything in between. So Dominic, based on this scale, what do you think about Luke Cromanhawk and how he potentially fits at Florida State in the years to come? Yeah, just let me give a little context also is I'm not a big fan of the five star, four star, three star, whatever rankings, whether that's on threes or 24 sevens or and it's nothing personal against any of those services. But there's not a lot of context into what a player will be or can be based on the college that they commit to um, the scheme and the techniques and the things that they're doing in high school based on what they'll be asked to do in college. So this scale that you're looking at is me looking at and knowing having a current knowledge of what the college is going to ask of them, what Florida state is going to ask of them to do, and then what they're asked to do in high school Um, And then kind of what they've done, what production have they had at the high school level and how does that fit based on, you know, what the what they're going to do and who they're going to be in college. Um, So, you know, with 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 Luke, I definitely see he somewhere fits. He fits somewhere in that two two point five range in that I don't see him being an instant contributor. I don't see him playing right away. I definitely think he's a year or two you know, from that. Um, obviously, that's not that's you know, that's not I'm not trying to knock him. It's not a knock on him. It's just, um, you know, to be a quarterback at the level that you have to be at Florida State, it takes uh, it, it takes a lot of work. And and uh, and so he's going to need some of that experience, some of that college experience and some of that learning and and growth uh, to get there. But he certainly is definitely going to be a guy who, you know, just like Tate, like I said, I'd see a lot of, if you want to think about career path um, and and what he could potentially be down the road, I see him fitting in that Tate Rodermaker mold. With the insights on Florida State's 2024 recruiting class, it's Dominic Robinson, the lead football analyst at warchant.com. Check out the channel. If this is the first one you've seen, we've got an entire series on the top players on the board for Florida State as they convert from commits to signees. So stay tuned to Warchant TV and check out the channel for more coverage of this big day for Florida State and a big year, the 2024 signing class.